Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Maria and I make videos about books, language learning and yeah just reading in general and today I wanted to talk about one of the recent books that I've read which is Abroad in Japan 10 years in the land of the rising sun and it's written by Chris Broad. I think most of you, well, if you're interested in Japan, you know his YouTube channel, Abroad in Japan. And this is the book that he has recently published, also his first book. Uh, so I was very excited to read it. And I've been watching Abroad in Japan for many years now. It's one of my favorite channels about Japan. Uh, I watched it before I went to Japan and I'm still watching it now. And every time I learn something new, it, it's very funny. And if you don't know it, it's this uh, British guy who has been living in Japan now for around 10 years. And he just shares a lot of his experiences, but also shows like the side of Japan that most people don't see. So he goes to abandoned islands or villages. He has made a couple of documentaries about like the Fukushima disaster or the 2011 tsunami. So it's very interesting and there's just a lot to see and and he has this like whole series across japan when he's cycling across japan so yeah it has been a lot of content that he has shared with us uh over the years and i really like watching it so when i heard about the announcement that he was publishing a book i was obviously very excited to read it so when i could order it i immediately ordered it and i think around the two weeks i have uh read this book so it's around 300 pages uh, but it's uh, it's a quite a quick read so uh, I'm, I'm a slow reader I think you can read it in like a week maybe even less but yeah I enjoyed every page on it so I took my time and to be sure if you like the Abroad in Japan channel you will love this book it's it's almost the same only then in book format and it's not that it's the same content that you can watch because there are a lot of the stories in here I have never heard on his channel. So it's about how he came to Japan and his whole journey from a small rural area to like Sendai and then to Tokyo and how he found work there outside of teaching English to Japanese students and just all of the things that happened to him during his years in Japan. And he's still there. He didn't uh, leave Japan. Uh, but yeah, the first 10 years are very interesting to read uh, because I think migrating to a new country, especially with a very different culture than you're used to, it's uh, it's a big challenge and not everyone can do this. So it, it takes uh, a certain personality and also a certain type of looking at things, uh, trying to find like the humor in even difficult situations. And I think his humor and like uh, sarcasm is a very good coping mechanism with the difficulties of migrating to a new country and to like start over your life. Well, that's practically what you're doing. You have to find new work, you have to find new friends, you have to uh, get accustomed to the culture. And one of the difficult, most difficult things I think in, in Japan is the Japanese language uh, and the culture differences, of course. So, um, yeah, the, uh, all of those things you kind of have to do immediately. It all goes very fast. So that, that's what you're reading in this book. And I really enjoyed reading it because I only have been in Japan for three weeks. And even then I realized how a bigger difference it is with the countries that I was used to. And I went into Japan with this like magical view of this amazing country and I'm, I'm still having this view I, I love Japan and obviously I'm realistic about the fact that it's not a new utopian country it's uh, it has its problems but I still have a very positive view uh, on Japan but I think it's different when you just visit there of course for three weeks or even uh, longer um, compared to people that are living there working there especially with the working culture is very different compared to the west it's quite hard as I understand and uh, that's one of the things that he writes about but it's also um, but this book is also about making new friends uh, he has a chapter on how he had learned the language and the challenges with it um, so yeah uh, from the language learning perspective I found that one very interesting too and also very inspiring because after only studying uh, for one year he tried out a speech contest uh, obviously it was very difficult and way too soon after one year of learning Japanese but uh, yeah I really liked reading about how he uh, studied for the contest and then how the contest uh, went so um, yeah very interesting chapter and most of the chapters here are very funny and just very nice stories about uh, awkward or 
interesting situations that he had encountered especially like language differences and just communication problems with like his colleagues and how that led to funny situations so i enjoyed that but there are also very serious chapters in here uh one dedicated to the 2011 tsunami earthquake tsunami and then the fukushima disaster and the documentaries that he made about the people that survived the disaster and had to build their life up again and also about other societal problems that are going on in japan and are not a lot talked about outside of the like the japanese society of course and throughout the chapters there's also some cultural notes and historical like uh, facts that you can read it's not too long not boring but just when it's uh, needed for the context, he explains some of the historical concept and how it led to certain things. So one of the things that uh, I found very uh, surprising in Japan was the lack of uh, trash bins. So Japan is a very clean country for so far as I have seen, but there were no trash bins. So I found it very difficult and uh, that led to the point that, yeah, we had to carry around our trash the whole day when we were walking somewhere and try to find like a trash can that um, yeah <laughs> we could empty our bags into and I was always wondering about the fact why there are so few trash cans out there and I thought it maybe had to do with the recycling process because I knew it, they had like a very difficult throughout process of recycling things but while I was reading it he made a comment about it as I understand one of the reasons why there are so few trash cans is because of the sarin attack um, I don't know the year when it happened somewhere in 2000s and after this incident uh, there were less trash cans and I still have to read the book by Haruki Murakami about the sarin attack um, so yeah maybe it will be explained more there so yeah all of those kinds of historical notes and cultural notes i found very interesting there are a couple about like japanese proverbs and how they relate to the society and to the view of like individualism and uh, community so yeah th that one i knew so some things about it but uh it was very nicely explained so yeah it wasn't just entertaining it was also educational and i would honestly recommend this book to anyone who is interested in japan it doesn't matter if you're preparing for your trip for the first time to japan or you have already been there but i do think that the best moment of yeah reading this book uh is when you have been to japan so after you come back from your trip uh you let the memories settle and just the experiences you reflect on them and just let the time pass a little bit then I think it's the right moment of reading this book and uh, reading through someone else's journey and experiences and reflect on your own experiences. So I found it very useful uh, because every time he was talking about an experience he had or a situation, even though I've never worked in Japan or lived for a long time, I have been just a couple of weeks there, it's still some of the things I could recognize, I uh, could relate to and it, it was just nice to think about the memories that I had made there. And I think this book is perfect for it. But it's also nice as a preparation for Japan, even though it's not like a book about what not to do in Japan or uh, what to pack for your trip there and how to manage your first days in there. It's more like a deeper uh, understanding of the society and of the difficulty of moving to a new country and yeah, trying to adjust to it. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. It's not your typical guide. So it's, it's more than that. And I was quite surprised by it because I, I did expect to like the book because I really like his channel. And I thought, well, if it has the same jokes and the same vibe to it, like this British sarcasm, then I would probably like it. But I didn't expect it to be so well written. Uh, so I was quite surprised because it is his first book. So I think he has given a lot of thought on how to manage the content, which stories to include and which uh, obviously not. And also the stories flow into each other very nicely. Uh, we have this like chronological order from his first day arriving and then moving on to like 2022. So yeah, 2022. And the last thing that I have to add is the cover. I, I really like it. It's colorful and all of the like the important parts of Japan that we all know are in here. We have the Mount Fuji, of course. Uh, the famous story gates, beautiful traditional houses, and on the back we also have the Mount Fuji. So in summary, it's a nice cover with great content. And I think that's something to be very proud of as a writer. And uh, yeah, I would recommend reading the book, watching the channel if you're not familiar with it, and explore Japan further. And of course, travel to Japan yourself if you can. 
because that would make the whole experience even better. Let me know down below in the comments if you have read the book, what your thoughts on it are. And if you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe for more reviews and uh, content about books. I will see you next time. Have a nice day. Goodbye.